Hello everyone! I went to Six Flags Great America this week and since I've talked about my love of theme parks on this channel before, I thought it would be fun to take you along with me. I've been to several Cedar Fairs parks, but never a Six Flags park so this was a big day for me. Also the first time I've tried vlogging so bear with me, okay? Alright, let's go ride some roller coasters. <laughs> Outside of the park's entrance, we were greeted by six American flags. This reminded me of my favorite Six Flags fact that the name Six Flags comes from the original park named Six Flags Over Texas, referring to the six nations that have ruled over Texas territory throughout history. And yes, that does include the Confederacy. They've since rebranded for obvious reasons. The park's entrance is otherwise lackluster, and I initially thought we'd mistakenly gone to a side gate. But once inside, things were a little better, and I was happy to see lots of greenery that provided much needed shade. The park's interior isn't anything super fancy, but it's clean and well maintained, and that's all I need from a park that's focused on thrill rides rather than immersive theming. As I said earlier, our goal today is to ride roller coasters, and the only thing that could possibly stop me is this heat. It is August in Illinois and close to 95 degrees outside. There are always shaded areas to rest, but navigating the park requires you walk through large stretches of unshaded tarmac hell. Definitely the worst part of my day. I was at Six Flags as a guest for an unspecified event, and our tickets included the Flash Pass, which kept all of our wait times under 20 minutes. It felt like cheating. I don't know if I would have bought it on my own because it is pricey, but it did allow us to ride more rides than anticipated. The first ride I rode was the Joker Free Fly Coaster, which opened in 2017. It has a unique stacked track with cars that flip forwards and backwards on the way down. I could not record with my phone during these roller coasters, so I'm going to insert some footage from the park here. The Joker was not the most thrilling ride, but I still liked it a lot and appreciated its unique design. It was a great way to start the day, but as you can tell, I am already so hot. Next, we headed over to the Dark Knight Coaster, which I thought was called Gotham City Rail until writing the script for this video. The Dark Knight Coaster opened in 2008 and is an indoor Batman themed ride that is part coaster and part dark ride. This ride has the best queue of any of the rides in the park. First, it was indoors, and second, it featured scenes that showed chaos left behind from the infamous Joker. It even had this interactive camera thing that mostly worked. The roller coaster itself was fine. There are a lot of painful sharp turns and some mannequins pointing guns at you, which did startle me, but I'm a sucker for immersive theming, so it was still a pretty good experience. We took a water break and then trekked to the opposite side of the park to ride Justice League Battle for Metropolis 4D, which is not a coaster but an interactive dark ride. Opening in 2016, it's like a more advanced version of Buzz Lightyear Star Command at Disney. This ride surprised me and I had a lot of fun defending Metropolis from the dark side or whatever. I wasn't really paying attention to the story. You'll now face the full force of my plasma You're really spinning. This ride exceeded my expectations, and I thought the ride was way more exciting than the Dark Knight coaster. After the ride, we spent some time sitting in its mysteriously empty gift shop where I found an outlet to charge my phone and chug some more water before we ventured out again into the heat. It was time to ride the more intense rides, and our first stop was Goliath. At the time of its opening in 2014, it held three world records among wooden coasters, including longest drop at 180 feet, fastest coaster reaching 72 miles per hour, steepest angle of 85 degrees, and as of 2022, it still holds the records for longest drop and fastest wooden roller coaster. The Goliath was awesome. My biggest complaint with wooden roller coasters is their shakiness, but this one was surprisingly smooth. I had such an adrenaline rush after riding it, highly recommend. We decided to take another water break and sit in the shade because it was only getting hotter. Our next stop was X-Flight. X-Flight opened in 2012, and while it didn't break any records, it is notable for being a wing coaster. A coaster type where riders sit on either side of the track with nothing above or below them. This was another coaster style that I had never tried before. It was fun, but the experience is something similar to a typical inverted coaster. It's still an intense, thrilling ride, but I wouldn't consider it something as unique as it appears to be. After X-Flight, we were really feeling the heat, so we took a break at the County Fair Food Court. Instead of leasing out food booths to existing chains, Six Flags offers its own food court selection, including restaurants with fun names like Chop Six, Macho Nacho, 
Go Fresh Cafe, American Dog House, and Thrill Burger. I'm gonna be honest, the food did not look very good and was ridiculously overpriced. I ended up getting a $10 soft pretzel, which was tasty, but not $10 tasty. I can't emphasize enough how hot it was outside. It was so hot that I was able to overcome my internalized Catholic shame and expose my midriff to get some relief. Our next ride was Viper, a Wild Rest themed wooden coaster that opened in 1995. There was barely a line for this ride and that's because it's mid. I don't have a lot to say about it. It's too intense to be a family ride, but not intense enough to compete with the other coasters in the park. Probably the most forgettable ride that I did. By this point of the day, I really wasn't feeling well and probably not drinking enough water. Look at me, I'm basically as red as Mr. Jellybean and clearly need to go inside. But before we left, there was still one more ride I needed to go on, Max Force. Max Force opened in 2019 and currently holds several records as of 2022. It holds the record for the fastest accelerating launch in North America, accelerating to 78 miles per hour in just 1.8 seconds. It also holds the world records for fastest inversion at 60 miles per hour and tallest double inversion at 175 feet. The best part of this ride is the initial launch. It's similar to Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point if you've ridden that ride too. The ride itself lasts only 23 seconds, but it makes up for that shortness in intensity. It's over before you have time to process what happened and leaves you with a massive adrenaline rush. That was our last ride of the day and it was finally time to leave the park. It it was just too hot to stay outside any longer. But despite the heat, I had a really fun day. If you like thrill rides, this is the place for you. Maybe like leave and come back for lunch though. I rode a total of seven rides today and my final rankings are Viper, Dark Knight Coaster, Joker, X-Flight, Battle for Metropolis 4D, Max Force, which leaves my number one ride as Goliath. I loved it, it was super fun. Good day though. Oh, what are you talking about? It's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching my first vlog. If you want to see more content like this, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment tell me your favorite roller coaster. Have you been to this park? Tell me about it. I want to hear about it. I have some more fun content coming soon and I will see you in the next one.